Hey guys, I'm Justin Zarr with bowhunting.com. I am here with Jerry Tepps from Pine Ridge Archery. Today we're going to talk to you a little bit about bow maintenance, how you guys can maintain your bow on your own, and what some of the basic tools are that Jerry and I feel like every bow hunter out there should own. So Jerry, appreciate you being here today, buddy. No problem. Let's start. Walk us through it. Well, basic, what you want to do is, you, first thing I like to do is look at the string. String is probably the most important thing off season or during the season you want to check. A simple waxing of your string is usually something that'll take care of these little frays or something on here. Yep. Um, but depending on how long you've had that string on there, you may want to go to your pro shop and have them take a look at it and see maybe if that's something that needs to be replaced. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when you guys are looking at your string, if you see those little hairs, a little fuzziness on the string, definitely grab a good high quality string wax. Give it a real quick wax. Make sure to avoid the serving. You do not want to wax the serving, only the string mm -hmm. portion of it. So yeah, a good quality string wax, you know, once every couple months should, you know, help keep your bow string in good shape. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jerry, while we're talking about the string, you know, you kind of mentioned your local bow shop, maybe replacing your string. As a rule of thumb, how often should people be replacing their string? It, it really depends on how often that you're shooting. If you're shooting throughout the hunting season and then you go into the 3D season and you're shooting a lot, my rule of thumb is no more than two years. Two years. Two okay. years and that's, and that's actually a lot. Most people will change them if they shoot a lot every year. But again, I only that's... shoot like two arrows every fall <laughs> at animals and I kill them and then I'm, I hang my bow. And I, and I hear so I can that. probably get like 10 years out of my string, right? And I hear that a lot, but it's actually the weather and other things, Absolutely. factors, not just the shooting that, that contribute Definitely. to a string. Yeah, away. rule of thumb, I think is two to three years, you know, on a set of strings and cables uh, before you want to replace those. Now, as we're talking about string, one of the other things that you may want to replace a little bit more frequently is going to be your D-loop right. or your string loop, depending on what you call it. Uh, so Jerry, when you're looking at a D-loop, you know, what's something you look for in figuring out when it should be replaced? It's, it's the same thing as your bow string. You want to look at any kind of fraying, any kind of wearable, because when, when your release is on there, it's always going to wear in the same spot, because it's always going to connect in the way you anchor on your uh, cheek. So it's, uh, you want to look for that wear spot. If it's wearing, you see it fading, Replace sure. it. It's an easy yeah. replacement. I generally replace mine once or twice a year, to be honest with you. Right. And what we're talking about today is that this is a lot of stuff that you guys can do on your own at home. Yep. And the more stuff you can do on your own at home, the more likely you are to do that. So guys, if we want to talk about replacing your D-loop, right? The first thing you're going to need is a bow vise, which you can see here behind me. We've got a Halon 32 here in the vise. There's a bunch of different vice styles out there in the market. This is just one of them. Um, but as long as you have a bow vise to hold your bow, First thing you're going to do is put your bow in the vise. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to level the bow, right? Right. So Jerry, generally with any bow leveling kit, you get two levels. You what get, are the differences? The, the larger level is what you're going to put on your string. This is what you want to do, get it in the center of the bubble. This is going to go with a spring on the end of your arrow once sure. you put it in with your rest up. And then you just make sure that they're level. And right. that's a good starting point for your string level and your arrow level. Yep, so once you've got your bow in, you've got it all leveled out, you can cut the old string loop off. Be very, very careful doing this anytime you've got any sort of sharp, whether it's a knife or a razor, a pair of pliers around your string, guys, be sure you're being very careful. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, a couple real quick things you're gonna need to be able to replace your D-loop. First of all, you're gonna need some D-loop material. Right. The guys over at Pine Ridge happen to make some awesome D-loop material in a variety of different colors. Mine just so happens to be pink. I like the added visibility. So you're gonna need some D-loop material. Mm -hmm. You're gonna need a lighter to yep. burn the ends of it. The ends. And then it looks like we've got two different styles of D-loop pliers here. So what's the, the big benefit of one versus the other? If they really, they really both do the same thing. You're going to start your D-loop as a small loop on this one. And what you do is you expand it out and that tightens it around your serving so it doesn't move. Sure. They both This do one the does the same thing. thing. You mm -hmm. slide it in there, open it up like that. So It's a personal preference. All right, so those are the basic tools you guys need to be able to replace your D-loop. Now, if you want to do anything else on your bow, if you want to put a new rest on, you want to put a new sight on, you want to adjust your limb poundage or whatever, you're going to need a set of Allen wrenches. Yeah. Jerry? Yeah, the, the Archer's Allen wrench is something that's been around forever. This has been Pine Ridge's staple for years. Sure. Um, any shop that you go to, any bow hunter should have one of these in their bow uh, case or their bag. Yeah. It covers everything that you could possibly need for your uh, bow tuning, uh, your sight movement, your rest movement, anything on the bow 
could all be done with yeah. one wrench. There is no replacing a good set of Allen wrenches for an Archer. Um, also here, it looks like we've got a set of star drive wrenches. Yep. A couple of the manufacturers out there are starting to produce bows that have you know, star drive nuts on them. Uh, so you're definitely going to want a set of these as well. Um, you know, what else we got sitting here? We've got some knocking players. Now these are probably a little bit less common in today's yeah. world than they were at one point in time. However, they are still used pretty frequently for kisser buttons. For kisser buttons, you have a crimp on the top and bottom. It's just, it's very simple, just to crimp them on. Sure. Um, it also has a removal uh, tool on it, so if you have an old one on there, you want to switch it out, put a larger one in that we make or a smaller one. Sure. You can do that too. Yeah, and having the right tool for the job is very important. And it, regardless of whether you're working on a bow or you're working on a car or anything else in life, you don't want to just take a set of pliers and crimp that thing on there, right? It's no. probably not going to hold properly. The advantage of a knocking pliers is going to maintain that round shape all the way around the string, pinch it in there so that it's not going to come flying off when you shoot your bow. So good set of knocking pliers. And then the last thing is probably something that a lot of guys overlook, but I guess you would call this... Uh, Thread repair tool, Thread right, repair Jerry? tools, exactly. Sometimes um, when you get a new bow, if you're setting up a new bow, a lot of times the screw holes or something will have some of the paint still in it sure. from the camo or whatever they do. You may need to clear that hole out. Uh, this also works on the inserts for your arrows. Um, so they're, and they come in many sizes. We have a stabilizer size, uh, we have a sight size, and then we also have the insert size. Sure which is just a good tool to have. You know, you'd never think you're gonna need this until you actually need it and you're like, shoot, I wish I had one of those right, right now because I think we've all been in a situation where we started to cross thread a screw yeah, a and little you don't, bit right. and you stop and you're like, oh shoot, now what do I do? If you had a good you know, thread repair tool specifically designed to be used on your bow and some of the standard threads, right. uh, it would really save you guys a lot of heartache out there. Believe me, I've had to use this more than a couple times. So Absolutely. that's really you know, a rundown of some of the basic tools we think you guys are gonna need to be able to work on your equipment at home. Uh, of course, if you guys wanna learn more about this equipment, how to use it, or just tips for bow maintenance, you can check out bowhunting.com. There's a lot of great information in the blog as well as in the forum. If you guys wanna buy a lot of these tools that we looked at today, check out Jerry's website over at pineridgearchery.com. Uh, as I said, they, they uh, make super, super high quality, good tools for archers to be able to work on their equipment. Make sure you guys pick up a set of Allen wrenches. Everybody needs to have one of these. <laughs> so Jerry, I appreciate you being here today. No problem, Thanks, Justin. buddy. Thanks. Thank you guys for watching.